Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 60 minute session for a client. We're gonna be focusing on a difficult event that took place. It was a ayahuasca ceremony. What happened during and after wasn't pleasant. So I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom and energy healing to support this client through this experience. I'm gonna be reading the goals here shortly. I wanna personally thank you, the client, so much for reaching out. It's an honor to help you. Thank you for sharing this experience with me and with us here on YouTube. I guarantee there's other people that are going to find this video and really appreciate the content. And just simply knowing another human being who didn't necessarily have the best outcome from an ayahuasca ceremony. Um, some people do have great experiences. Some people don't have the greatest of experiences. And so you're not alone in this, okay? And I want to uh, go ahead and read the goals and then I'm going to get started. So... You say, I got an evil entity attached during an ayahuasca ceremony that drained me and influenced me to listen to suspicious channels on YouTube that use black magic in their body changing energy formulas. I got inserted with many negative things like etheric and archon implants, negative programming, parasites, portals, etc. I spent many years clearing myself However, I still feel pressure in my aura and an entity attachment. I feel disconnected from myself and, and, and the outer world. I would like to experience full clearing if possible, or at least clearing of bad energy formulas. Okay. I have a lot of thoughts about all you've shared here, but I want to just get in the zone and see where this journey takes us. And one thing um, I do feel inspired to say when it comes to anything that is like an evil entity attachment, um, you are a powerful being of light. And so when your, your heart, when you are tuned into your heart and what creates joy inside your heart, then those negative entities don't want anything to do with you. And maybe this is an opportunity for you to learn a skill about love and actually heal that entity where the entity could drain you and influence you in all these ways. You have the power to send the energy back with love. And it's amazing what, what happens. So if you were to see yourself as a, a tuning fork or a crystal, or you, the human, are a very unique and special vibration. You yourself are. Every single human being is a uniquely special vibration. And so your vibration comes with a spe special formula all its own, right? Your formula, your spirit, your light, your love, right? And when you aren't afraid of all the other tuning forks out there, whether they're incarnate humans or spirit beings or alien beings or whatever, um, even uh, like black magic or archons are all tuning forks, all vibrations, right? And so when you're tuned into your own vibration and you're working with the sound of your beautiful love, um, you have the power to influence all the other formulas out there. So for instance, my love, <laughs> I, Abby, the tuning fork, have the power to um, inspire people to not be afraid um, and be able to take a look into the eyes of anything out there and not feel um, like it is more powerful than themselves or it could influence them or it could cause them to be in great um, despair because we're powerful in our own light and light comes from love and love comes from joy, right? <laughs> um, being truly who you are is so powerful. <laughs> so don't let anything that has ever happened be more powerful than you because it's negative or it's gross or it's cruel or it because that's what it is. But you aren't that stuff, right? You aren't that stuff. So you were already creating a separation between what is you and what is that. So any of the YouTube channel stuff, that's that channel stuff. We, we don't have to let that channel, YouTube channel, those channels, or those entities, or that ayahuasca ceremony energy, um, we, can, we, can, we can separate the energy here and just say, that's that over there, and then this is me over here. This is mine. But I can influence it positively, I can heal it, or it can run away. It doesn't have to receive healing. It doesn't have to receive love. Like people, you know, could choose to watch this video or not watch this video. That's their choice. 
Um, and people can re choose to receive the love and healing that is that is going to be inspired from this video, or they don't have to, and that is their choice. Now, sometimes our minds get in the way of how we translate what love is, and sometimes love ends up becoming a manipulation, but we were only unsure ourselves of where our heart center was. It, it's a, I mean, it's like a huge tree with many branches of possibilities here. But what I want to get down to business with is you are your own formula. You are your own energy. You are your own light. You are ridiculously bright and beautiful and powerful. And you're courageous to go through a difficult and confusing experience like this. So we're bringing you back to you. All right. So we're bringing you back to you. And then we are that that goes over there. OK, that goes wherever that needs to go. It has nothing to do with you anymore has nothing to do with you. So now we got to understand why you're still holding on. And maybe you just didn't understand how to let it go. Because is it attached to you or are you attached to it? Not sure how this actually works in the energy world. So I just feel inspired to tell you that stuff. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's get down to business here. Let's see what this looks like in the energy world. Your energy field all about this information. And what we can do to really help you today. This is going to be a great experience. Today's going to be a wonderful day. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. So I'm just sort of presenting to the universe because I even right now I feel, believe it or not, as much as you want my support, there's like you are pushing me away. <laughs> um, don't worry about it. In your conscious mind, you're like, I'm definitely not pushing you away, Abby, but other aspects of you, perhaps it's the negative entity, right? Uh, perhaps it's the pressure in your aura. We don't know what all it is, but I just feel like there's this pushing me away. And that could also be fear. Um, that uh, even a uh, being of love, for instance, if I'm coming as a being of love to help you, you might be pushing everything away. You might be pushing love and negativity and everything away. And you've got your special little safe spot, your energy fields, your little safe space. Maybe you've been doing a lot of energy protection work and you're just protecting yourself from anything and everything that's out there. So maybe that's cool to hear that your energy field is definitely repelling me. <laughs> if it's repelling me, it's repelling everything. <laughs> so maybe that's a good thing. But what's on the inside? Are you repelling that? <laughs> what's on the outside? Uh, so I just want to mention this. It's like you're in kind of like a hardened, uh, massive egg, like a big dinosaur egg, uh, maybe a big dragon egg or something. Uh, it's really cool, kind of burnt red color. Okay. All right. So the next next wave of information, basically, um, I feel kind of like I'm being electrocuted. Uh, like there's a wave of electricity. Um, here's Saturn and then here's Saturn's rings. And the rings are like waves of electricity. And it's particularly wanting to hurt my third eye and my crown chakra. But it's hilarious because in the energy world, like it can send me energy or you can send me energy. Anybody can send me energy, but I can just be like, um, I can alter it. I can change it. Especially when the energy is coming from fear, it's really weak. When the energy is coming from a divine truth or the spirit or the heart of who you are, it's really powerful. So this electricity is just fear. It's just uh, radiating fear, which is a uh, very uh, weak energy. It's illusion energy. And so it's like trying to convince me that I should be afraid of a magic trick or something. Yeah, I was going to um, have you stand in my shoes and then watch how you're going to handle what we're witnessing. So you, the observer of your own energy field, you, the observer of this electrical energy wave, okay? But my guides say, no, not yet, Abby, just continue to move forward and introduce you to what I'm seeing, how it makes me feel, and then continue to translate as we go, okay? <sighs> yeah, you definitely needed some support. <laughs> Yeah, it's a mess in here. I mean, where do you exist in here exactly? Okay. The next scene is you really are in a very small space. And it is in the form of an egg shape. 
And I'm trying to understand, is this what you would define your as your aura? Um, and it's very confining. It's very suffocating. It's like putting a plastic bag over your head and saying, this is my aura and this keeps me safe. It's going to be suffocating, okay? And uh, I got to rebuild you. I mean, I'm going to have to rebuild you from the inside out because we got we to gotta give you your strength and your solidity back. I want to I wanna again um, applaud you for your soul um, and you the human because you're working together to go through a very um, difficult, scary um, hardship. It's not easy to go through that and I can see how that has impacted you. And I need to rebuild you because you're a strong human being, right? And you don't need, you don't need this anymore. You don't need this anymore. Next thing, uh, this was the other part of the scene because there's constantly these pulses of electricity. You're inside the egg and these pulses are kind of coming um, from the outer rim, <laughs> whatever that means. But there's a bunch of beings. There's like 12 and they're, uh, you know, dark and creepy looking. And, and they're the ones that are kind of sending out these uh, electrical pulses. I take your, you and the eggshell, I, it, and it's hard, it's solid, okay, it's not like uh, empty, you're inside, but it's like a solid mass, it's, it's not easy to break, okay, and then I take you and I just place you in my heart, and you're gonna be safe in there, okay, you're gonna be totally safe in here, and so now that you're in my heart, now let me see where, what things look like around me, let me find out what these beings are all about. No, they're just jerks. I gotta decide what my role is with these beings. I mean, I could just move you to a totally different dimensional space, acclimate you to another vibration that you, you're done with them. You've already outgrown them. But I need to make sure that you're not gonna be attracted to the familiarity of this uh, punishment environment. You're going to be punished. Um, you don't need to be attracted to this vibration of punishment. And since you've been going through this for a while, like you're becoming acclimated to this vibration, so it's familiar. If I take you out of this punishment that's familiar, um, you may attract yourself back into it. So I need to... I need to find out what inside yourself says, I still need this. What is your connection to this? Do I need to heal these beings? I just, I need to, there's a lot of information I need to understand. So I'm just going to listen here, okay? I, uh, I just, this is what I'm inspired to do. I uh, put all these dark beings in silly underwear and they're just completely naked wearing like really silly underwear. I don't know why. <laughs> That's what I came up with. And they're just, I, I, I'm creating the vibration of embarrassing. And I'm giving them the sound of, a, of the opportunity to be embarrassed. And they'll either choose to be embarrassed and say, what am I doing and why am I doing it? Or they'll try to block me. And I'm just I'm giving them the gift of, of knowing what it feels like to be embarrassed. And that just happens to be what it looks like in my vision. They're gross mass. They're, um, there's like 12 of them and they're starting to uh, mutate together, okay? And when they mutate together, they look like one ginormous and it's way huger than the 12 put together. It's almost like it's grown out of control. It's just some ginormous naked fat man. I mean, but he um, has mu really strong arms. They keep referencing strong arms and he wants to just crush and bash and destroy. And he's huge. He's like cosmic huge. He's like planetary body enormous. He just looks like a big fat baby man. I just, but he's strong, okay? He represents being strong. And um, something about his divine truth is um, something has hurt him deeply inside of his heart and he's angry and the only thing he can come up with is to just break everything down around himself. He just wants everything to just be broken down. It's just because he's broken down and he doesn't know how to exist in the feeling of being broken. 
And so he's overcompensating. Um, he's aggressively destroying everything in his path. I feel like the vibration of embarrassment is um, a key to what broke him. Because he was rejected. There's something about this emanation, this tuning fork, vibration, consciousness. What does it have to do with you? What is this the entity that you're describing? What I don't know um, exactly yet, but I do know that as we continue to move through this, translate this, it's going to start to open up your energy field. And I'm not defining this as evil. I'm defining this as, um, I guess, an innocent mess, really. It's just an innocent big mess. So I find that there's just a tiny little shrapnel in his heart. It's just a little um, gristle or something. And I'm just pulling it out. And this is a big cosmic guy, okay? And I'm just pulling it out of there. And it looks like a, a screw. Like a little screw. When I pull it out, it, it actually looks like a screw. And instantly I'm taken to another scene. Oh man, you really went on a crazy path. <laughs> this ayahuasca ceremony and everything that, that came from it. <laughs> you really went on a crazy path. All right, so after I pull out the screw and I'm trying to uh, transmute or support or help uh, this vibration, I'm instantly pulled to a very creepy scene, okay? And the next scene is this. There is a, a person... I, I want to say it's you and you're on a, a kind of an operating table in what is not a hospital room. It's kind of a creepy room, like a torture room, but your chest is open. Your heart is exposed and there's work being done on your heart. And it's really weird. It's like um, turning your heart into a robot um, heart or something because I, I see that they're uh, altering what is a uh, flesh material and turning it into it's almost like computer code okay like java or something I just see not necessarily ones and zeros but there's also commands and uh, I see prompts and things in here <laughs> and, and so I was like <laughs> this is so funny. This is funny timing because, um, I don't know, this reminds me of my old computer and it was like CD slash slash Monkey Island. Like I had this like great game I like to play as a kid and it was Monkey Island on this old IBM computer. And I'm just like CD slash, I'm just making a funny joke in your heart about how I want to play Monkey Island and maybe, maybe the computer of your heart will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can do here. There's no doubt about it, you definitely did bring in the, the idea, right, of formula that is to alter your programming. I, I mean, it's straight up showing me this. It's, a, it's exactly as you say, you use a specifically the word formula, which I find interesting. And there is what is like your heart as work done to your heart in a way that is taking away your humanity. But remember, nobody can do anything to you. Only you can do to you. So anything that anybody gives you, you choose to receive it or you, you don't. That, that's how this works in the human world and the energy world. And you can choose to receive fear if you want to. You can choose to receive the manipulation if you want to and believe it's the truth. And then you can tell yourself it's the truth. Then you can become the manipulation, not even realize all that stuff's happening. But it seems to me that you, you, you kind of, um, all right, let me just keep watching, okay? Because what we want to do is repair this. My, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. I'm going into your heart and I'm falling through the ground um, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And again, there's a sense that you are in my heart. You're still in that shell that, um, I don't know, like dragon egg, let's say. It's kind of cool, but you're in my heart, okay? 
and I'm keeping you safe. But there's another sense as I'm falling that there's another aspect of yourself um, somewhere hidden. And I'm convinced there's multitudes of other aspects of yourself. The ayahuasca ceremony may have, uh, have shattered you a bit, okay? So we got to pick up the pieces of yourself, return them to you so you can feel like yourself. So when you, you say in your goals that you don't feel like yourself, um, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, where are you? You're in different places. Trying to manage this as a human being? Oh my gosh. Um, again, it takes a lot of strength to, to even keep yourself together. So take, keep your wits about you when your energy is uh, sever, like different aspects of you are in, I mean, where are they all? I'm finding yet another one. And so I'm just falling and falling and go through your heart and I'm just falling and falling. And it's just a never-ending darkness, and it's a never-ending fall, okay? I just create, I just stop, because, again, I don't have to fall here. I'm in control. And I take my arm and I stretch, and I grab you, and I, you're like a kitten, and I like pinch your little scruff, and I take you, and I, I actually take you, and I place you in my heart. So I've got two versions of yourself in my heart. But this dark place is a being. This whole space is a being, an actual being. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. So I'm creating separation between us, you know, where I stand, you in my heart, and this massive being. You know what it reminds me of? You know Pac-Man and the little goons that are trying to get the Pac-Man? This being is like a black goon, and we just got absorbed into it, okay? And it created the illusion of being some kind of infinite space that you would never get out of. What do I do with this? I mean, we got the big baby man, cosmic baby. We got this goon. We got the heart with the programs in it. We, I've got two aspects of yourself. I'm just talking to the universe here. Because vibrationally, this, this goon, this massive goon, is neutral. <laughs> so isn't like one way or another way isn't, um, you know, evil or benevolent or it's just a neutral. So... It's emotionless. It's just, emo it has no feelings. You're looking for something. That's uh, what echoes to me. That you are looking for something and there's a part of you that's an adventurer. Maybe that was the part of you that wanted to do this ayahuasca ceremony is the adventurer within you. And once I separate this massive feelingsless goon out of the way. I see that you're an adventurer and you're kind of like uh, mining, <laughs> like you're mining for, I don't know, diamonds or who knows what, but you're, you're mining. It, it represents you're looking for something precious and you want to find it. I mean, you're an adventurer. You're wanting to find something precious and you're wanting to learn from preciousness like you are. And so I take the adventurer spirit and I place the adventurer spirit with the dragon egg you and the kitten you and the adventurer you all in my heart, okay? Yeah, that's it. That's it. So I go back through your heart um, where the programs are. Oh man, you're a mess. Like you're on this operating table. Uh, I don't know what are... Skeleton people are operating on you and changing the your heart's material and putting computer programs in it. It's weird. <laughs> I just merge all the skeleton people and then I just, I don't know, like a piece of cloth. I just, I just toss them out of the space. I'm just like fling. <laughs> and I say, what are you doing to yourself? Why are you doing this to yourself? You, you don't know how to say that you did this to yourself. You did it. 
I, I I feel like I I'm being silly again, and I'm just like, you did it! You did this! Wow! Look at what you accomplished here. I'm actually impressed. Like you really accomplished some mess. <laughs> We're gonna get you taken care of. <laughs> okay. I don't know how I tell the universe again. It's like usually there's a pretty quick um, solution, but based on what I'm looking at and how it speaks to me vibrationally, um, I gotta ask for some support or some guidance on how to properly correct what I'm witnessing here. You are on an operating table, your chest is open, your heart is a mess, and so I'm, I'm just asking for some guidance on this one. They tell me to remove that heart because that heart isn't your true heart. It was the heart that you were given and, it, and chose to adopt as your heart, but it's not your true heart. And then they want me to reach my hand down and they want me to kind of feel around. <laughs> it's like I move my hand through you and my hands in multiple different dimensions. And I'm like really reaching in there like, oh, okay, I know you're in there somewhere. And I'm, I'm going to grasp something and pull it out of a hidden space. Not easy to reach. It's weird. It's a, uh, it is a fork. It's a golden fork. So not that strange? You're using this word formula and we're talking about even people as tuning forks. And this is not a tuning fork. This is like a fork used to eat food and it's a golden fork. And that's what I'm pulling out is this golden fork. And then I hand this golden fork to God. And what's interesting is that golden fork has, a, it, it has something to do with you because everything else just disappears. And this whole space is, it's not necessary anymore. Vibrationally, everything that was holding this concept of you and this heart, and then what was beneath the heart and the part of you that fell into the goon and then the separation from the goon to find the adventurer, all this stuff, um, it's only, a, it's only materialized in so much that it is needed by yourself. You are dynamic. I mean, your mind, your ego, your uh, infinite soul, conscious, so unconscious, subconscious. I mean, this is a complex. Your complex is ridiculously complex. And so in all that complexity, we aren't always driving the ship. We don't tell our heart to beat. It just beats all by itself. So what aspect of you decided this was the right arrangement doesn't really matter. We're just working on rebuilding you from the inside out. And so this is no longer needed. And I don't know any more about the Golden Fork, but I do know that it's placed in a beautiful space full of love and support. And it has to do with who you are, almost like another aspect of yourself that needed to return to God or heaven or something of this kind. You're in many safe places, that's for sure. Now what? Feels a little confusing. Oh, okay. I'm back out here with this big baby man. And I had the screw, remember? I pulled it out of his heart. And he's not angry anymore. He's kind of feeling strange. Like he doesn't remember. He remembers, but he doesn't. He doesn't really understand why he was doing that. He doesn't feel the need that he felt for that behavior. Doesn't feel it. And he shrinks on down to you. And I'm just looking at you now. And I hug you and I say, everything's gonna be okay. You've been on a wild ride and it doesn't have to, like it doesn't have to keep sweeping you off your feet. You can come back to yourself now, acclimate everything you've discovered, everything you've learned, and all, that, all the ways you've grown. These difficult experiences, they're difficult. But you can grow out of them and then appreciate the journey. You know, some people get swallowed up, but I have a feeling you're going to grow out of this and appreciate the journey. 
And I don't hold anything against any YouTube channels or any entities or ayahuasca ceremony people or whatever. Don't hold anything against yourself either. And just forgive the whole thing, okay? And be grateful for the whole thing. Because uh, that forgiveness and that gratitude brings the power back to you and helps you to grow out of it. Because you're not holding on to anything. You're not holding it against anybody. You're not holding on to anything. You're free, okay? You're free. I'm not, um, I'm asking, can I pull these parts out of my heart yet? And they say, not yet. And I say, okay. Okay, so what's the next thing? And I'm just going over all your goals again. Um, what else can we look at? This evil entity, your aura, um, you know, the YouTube channels, ayahuasca ceremony. What's the next layers that we need to clear out of here to really help put you back together again? Any other parts of yourself that I'm to retrieve and bring back to you? Um, where do we, what's the next step? It's, it has to do with your mind and your perception. It has to do with the human versus spirit world. It has to do with the concept of a negative entity. I mean, we're talking about an evil, evil, evil spirit here. I ask you, do you want an evil spirit in your energy field? Because if you say no, then there isn't an evil spirit in your energy field. Is no powerful enough? Is no enough? Or does it require years and all this extra stuff in order for it to be complete? We don't realize um, how much time we... It, one way I think about it is like this. You, let's say in the, you lose somebody that you love. And some people choose to grieve for the rest of their life and never move on from that. Other people, one year, and some people say, you know what, I'm going to be so grateful for the time I got to know this person. I'm really excited for them to be entering into heaven, and I'm just going to be cheerful. I'm not even going to, I don't need to feel sad about this. And so there's different ways that we choose to have an emotional relationship with the things that happen in our life that are difficult. And so you can decide how much time you, you need, but no is enough that you don't have an, an evil spirit in your energy field. You just simply say, no, there is no evil spirit in my energy field. Done. That is how powerful you're, you are. That is how powerful you are. That is how powerful that statement is. So, in the energy world, I can stop time, I can rearrange things, I can go beneath, but I, I need to honor what the true harmony is and what the learning is all about, which I, I do that. That's just who I am. And, but there, I can do anything instantaneously by choice because my choice and my heart and my intention are so solid. I don't, don't question it. I don't um, say... I'm going to stop time mm, a little bit. No, bam, pause. I'm going to say no now. And when I say no, I mean no. No. And once no happens, it's not like, well, no, but what if no is not good enough? Then no is never going to be good enough. You see, so you got to be solid. That's what, what they're wanting to tell you about the mind and perception, the human versus the energy world or spirit realm and an evil spirit. You say, no, there is no evil spirit in my energy field. If you say, well, it still feels like there is, then there always will be forevermore. So that, that is where affirmations and that is very powerful and even people, it's like, uh, let's say the affirmation is, um, I am happy. And you're talking about somebody who's been depressed for years and years and years. So if they were to say, I am happy, they would definitely say, well, I'm kind of lying because I'm definitely not happy, but I'm going to choose to say I'm happy because I'm trying to turn this energy around. And it works. And so you need to start saying, no, there is no evil spirit in my energy field. 
and you will slowly but surely discover that there isn't one there anymore because you're letting all of this stuff go and you don't need it anymore because you are collecting yourself, you're bringing you back to you and you are grateful for everything you've been through. You're grateful for how you handled it. You're grateful for how difficult it was and you're grateful for what a powerful and incredible human being that you are today. You're grateful because you learn from all these difficult experiences how to be who you are. And who you are is just, sometimes life, I feel life can have this morbid um, teacher. And it's like, I am not the person I ever wanted to be because these experiences just destroyed me from the inside out. And I don't even know who, who I am. That's, that's life guiding you to decide who you are after a very difficult period of time. Could even be decades, you know? And so you decide who you are, and then you rebuild yourself based upon who that person is. So who are you? You're full of energy, you're an adventurer, um, you're seeking um, to understand your true spirit, um, the power of your heart. Um, maybe you're growing into becoming an energy healer yourself. That energy healing, like energy healing 101, step one is you work with love. If you wanted to heal somebody you really cared about, um, would you work with fear in order to heal them? Or would you, would you take ownership? Um, I'm going to remove the weight of your depression. And I believe in myself, therefore I can. And it's up to them if they want to receive that or not. But you can help people with love and with caring and with a positive vision that you see is going to really help them to get out of a bind. And you have to have confidence and you have to have a positive um, energy and know that none of those formulas and YouTube channels and the ayahuasca ceremony, and the evil spirits, all that was there for was to help you w experience something complicated, difficult, scary, probably felt alone through a lot of this, confused as all get out, doing whatever you could to get yourself out of it. And, only to come to a point where you're figuring it out now. And it starts with love. Starts with love, okay? <clears throat> All right, let's see what the next thing is. That was that part I was supposed to tell you about the mind and perception and the human and the spirit realm and all that stuff, evil spirits. I was supposed to tell you that, okay? All right, what's the next thing? I'm going to ask you from the inside of yourself... I'm going to say, I want you to come out and I want you to face me because I want to see if I make you uncomfortable. And if I make you uncomfortable, I want to understand where your discomfort is coming from because we need to rebuild you. You need to not feel uncomfortable about any being, any spirit in the whole infinite universe. Doesn't matter what spectrum they're on because you can face any spirit. I can face any spirit. I can face anybody. But it's you got to rebuild yourself. There's probably some what what I consider a post traumatic stress involved here, and so there's memory, and memory possesses echo, and you're going to have to start working almost like with bold trust and rebuild confidence and rebuild your relationship with love and your relationship with yourself and your understanding between the human and the spirit world. You're gonna have to reteach yourself how to do it. Even after I went through a very difficult psychic attack experience, it took several years for me to be able to go to sleep again at night. Even though I knew I was safe to go to sleep, I knew I could face anything, I knew how to handle this situation, I had to go into a, a time where I felt completely under the boot of something that was going to kill me. I mean, it was very scary and I felt very alone, but I learned how to face it by being myself. I learned how to face it by being myself and by dancing with it, by laughing with it, by sending love into it. And um, as I started to learn how to do this, um, I circulated my way out of that, but I still carried the echoing memory of what was still kind of there. It took time for me to know it was safe for me to sleep. It just does. It takes time to, to fully mend this stuff. But we're already getting you started, okay? We're already laying the groundwork here for you. Okay. 
Yeah, you don't want to come out. You don't want to face me. Aha! Okay. This is, uh, this is powerful. This is teaching me a lot about where you're at right now. We want to know what does come out to face me. <laughs> a weird, uh, I don't know, it's elongated body. It doesn't really have shoulders. It's more like a triangular body. It's wearing kind of a black cloak and a big eyeball on its head, okay? Which is really just the point of the triangle. It's a big eyeball on it. And it's black outfit, okay? And it seems to have these things that these knots of arms that just want to come out. And I say, um, you know, who are you? And I start to notice this whole space starts to open up and there's all this weird, it looks like Tetris is falling from the sky in shapes. A lot of energy hates my guts here. Uh, it needs to protect itself from me. And, <laughs> and I say, okay, I'm saying your name in here. And I ask you, if you feel safe with where we're at right now, I want you to come out and look me in the eye. Don't worry about all this weird stuff. Just come out and look me in the eye right now because we're going to rebuild you. And you're just a, like a little baby on an umbilical cord attached to this uh, triangle with the big eyeball. And it's attached to your lower back, like this umbilical cord isn't attached to the belly button. It's attached to like, I don't know, it, it, it shows it attached to your solar plexus, like your emotional gut on the backside. But then it also shows it to your sacral chakra. There's only one umbilical cord, but it seems to be overlapping. Like it references it's attached to both your emotional gut and your sacral chakra. And I keep saying your name and I say, no, I want to see you here. I don't care about all that crap. I want to see you. I want you to look me eye to eye. I want you to stand here and I want you to look me eye to eye. You're trying. You are. You're doing a very good job because the more you come out, the more you're focused on me and not all this other junk. All this other junk is just a bunch of noise and it's stupid, okay? You're not stupid. Now come on out and show yourself and look me eye to eye. This whole space is uh, like a big blue brain now and it's starting to come out of the ground. And it's everything is rumbling and shaking. Even uh, all this other weird stuff like the Tetris blocks and the weird eyeball guy and the baby and the bilical coral. There's just weird stuff coming out of everywhere. And even the brain is sort of just gyrating, coming out of the ground, and everything is getting shook up. And I keep saying, talk to me. And again, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. Do you understand? I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah, I am. So what comes out next is this brain lifts everything up, and I see a version of you, and it's like your inner child is attached to it. And you're basically under an unfathomably bright light that is burningly hot but it's not burning your flesh but um, you're naked and you're laughing like this is funny and uh, this this uh, light is on you and it's just it, it's un it's absolutely uncomfortable so it's very strange that it's all very funny so again that's why I'm looking for the confident you I'm looking for you to come up and out and stop hiding Stop hiding, okay? I don't care about all this stuff. I need you to come out and stop hiding. I need you to be serious. Come on. Where are you? Come on out and look me in the eye. Nice. It, not what I expected, but this will work. Basically, you um, you know how I was telling you at the beginning? I want to uh, s switch places. Like, I want to watch you face all this stuff. I just want to see how you're impacted by everything that we are seeing so that I can understand how you're facing everything you're going through while I'm teaching you how to face it <laughs> inside yourself, but also externally. Because when you watch this video, you're going to have a conscious clue what we were working on, what we we're talking about. Um, and so it's going to teach your conscious mind as well as your inner selves 
um, how to face this, how to deal with this. But we're also mending it, okay? We're also healing these vibrations and giving you a major edge. All right. You got still have these parts inside of my heart that are safe and protected and they're being healed in that light in there, okay? They're really precious parts that need to be in a safe space. All right. So you kind of grow into my feet, like you're inside of me, okay? And you're just like a fully grown man. And there's something about the kind of Wild West man. And there's a bit of a grisly beard and a dark brown cowboy hat and the whole deal. I mean, it's a very Hollywood movie like cowboy, even with the smoking gun kind of, um, you seem to be holding literally a smoking gun. And it's inside, okay? I say, you still haven't faced me. And I'm not going anywhere. You still haven't faced me. And that just turns into a bunch of uh, crunchy leaves that are just breaking apart and blowing away. And I say, you still haven't faced me. And all this junk is starting to form into just a psychopath. Uh, there's just a, a man that has many, 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 many arms. And the arms, uh, they're very long. And they kind of hold him up. And this is like a... It's just a just total monster, you know? But I don't care about him. I care about you. You see the difference between me focusing on this evil spirit? Do you see what's happening here? When I don't give the evil spirit any attention, it doesn't exist. And it's going to get pissed that it doesn't matter anymore. Because it doesn't. You matter. You matter. And I need to help you know how much you matter. And that's part of rebuilding you, you know? So I reach into my heart and this one that's in the dragon's egg, the egg breaks and it's just a tiny, tiny little you. And I place you on the ground like a little baby version, just a tiny you. This little kitten is just kind of a weird deformed humanoid. It doesn't even really look like a cat. It was like a baby born wrong or something. And then... The adventurer even is tired. Almost like it was uh, maybe the mind, the ego. Um, ego was guiding you on some kind of exciting journey, but really it, uh, it has to be grounded too, you know. It has to, there has to be like a grounded in reality concept to it. And that's kind of a weird thing to say when you're an energy healer, spiritual um, speaker. Because uh, people might say I wouldn't be grounded in reality, but I'm totally practical. I'm totally practical about all this stuff. And I do feel, see, experience energy. I experience people. And I communicate in this way. It's just another way of communicating. It's just another way of using all that you are to help others and to perceive the world that you exist in. And there's nothing weird and, uh, and, and flighty. or It's like I'm totally grounded in this whole thing. And I'm a grounded spiritual worker because I'm a practical spiritual worker. And I can tell you all kinds of cool things and scary things and everything that I've been through. It sounds far out and adventurous, but I've been grounded. I have to be grounded through this. I have to be balanced to do what I do. And so, so the adventurer kind of reminds me of... Uh, the excitement of discovering your soul and discovering who you are in the universe and, and the fun of discovering the universe. It is fun. It's ridiculously fun. And there's so much you can find and so much that would surprise you, ways that you think things are only to discover it's, you, you only thought, you only thought about it. Uh, it's, it's almost like you'd be surprised what you're going to see and how you're going to see it and sometimes it's scary to do that. Sometimes it's scary, but 
There's so much divine truth. It's just so easily accessible. <laughs> I'm just looking at these three U's. They're all minimal and struggling. And there's something about that golden fork that is, seems to be coming full circle here. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I, I have the golden fork in my hand, but I don't... It's like I have it returned to me. Like it's, it did what it needed to do in that dimension of heaven and source. But it's not fully self-realized yet. I'm just going to lie it down next to these three sort of miniature, small U's. So I have four versions of yourself here and this total monster-esque nightmare thing um, in the background, okay? See how you are more important than that monster? And that monster can't do anything. All it can do is try to distract me or get my attention or maybe I'm supposed to heal it. No, I'm not. I'm supposed to focus on you. Because you are the most important person in this whole thing. Each one of you has a mangled heart. And obviously the fork. What, what is the fork? It's a golden fork. Does it have a heart? I'm going to choose to see that the fork has a heart. I want to see what the heart looks like at the fork. Hmm. Fork is... I'm not sure about the fork still. Like I'm, it, it seems to represent um, a special gift or uh, it, it's still a mystery. I don't fully understand it yet. But no, it it doesn't have a heart. It's still even if I choose to see that it does, it doesn't. It it, it says no to me on that one. Okay. Hmm. You don't want to rebuild yourself. That's because this monster is also you. It tells me everything that happened, the ayahuasca ceremony and the evil spirit and all the influence to watch these YouTube channels all came from your own mind. It was your yourself that did it. But sometimes we go through out of this world experiences and we separate from ourself in different ways. And we don't realize that we're up against ourself. We, we turn ourself into the bad guy. And now that person is not us. That person is some evil spirit. But it actually is you. It is a part of yourself that truly broke off. Along with these other parts that didn't know what in the world happened. They're just like the shrapnel. They're just the aftermath. So now I actually have five parts of you. And now I welcome that monster and I just pull him out and I say, you're one of these little babies. And I take him and I bring him down here and he is absolutely horrified. He's embarrassed. He's ashamed. Like I, I shall always see him as the evil spirit because if he was actually you, then what does that say? And it embarrasses your soul that you would ever allow your soul to treat yourself like this you would do this to yourself is embarrassing to your soul actually and i say that's beautiful that that the emotion of embarrassment is really difficult shame oh my gosh i i am very vulnerable to that one these are very difficult human emotions that mold and shape us in ways like really profound ways they can cause us to hold ourselves back or really propel ourselves forward and so this embarrassment is um you're breathing now. I say, I don't think less of you at all. I think you're great. I think you're awesome. We all need to get turned around, turned upside down, flipped inside out, and try to figure out who we are now and find ourselves again. And you're doing that. It's embarrassment is part of it. Shame isn't part of it. Whatever. Fear is a part of it. All this is part of the growth process. You know what I mean? You really, really, really want there to be a separate entity from yourself. But it was you. You separated from yourself. You did this to yourself. And that's okay. You're not the first person I've seen this with. <laughs> 
oftentimes, and I'm telling you more often than not, it is always yourself that ends up being the demon, but I'm not saying every time, but in this case, it is you, okay? Let that be a comfort. <laughs> right now, I'm still working on this because this is a major repair of your heart. This whole thing has been repairing your heart, bringing you back to yourself, recollecting yourselves, giving you pride and self-love and, and um, it's, this is actually giving you the breath of life again. Like we bring you back to life here, okay? You are judgmental. <laughs> you finally appear here to talk to me. And you appear as this wise man. And you do not want that... It looks like a wriggly, parasitic worm part of yourself to be merged with the other parts. And I say, boy, that's judgmental. You don't believe me, do you? That this is you. You don't like this part of yourself. This part of yourself is a worm. And you don't love this part of yourself. We should just throw this part of yourself away forever and just let it be lost in the ethers of darkness. Forever and ever and ever. You'll never feel whole if you do that. You got to learn how to love this ugly side of yourself. It's a gross, ugly, parasitic worm. If I can love this parasitic worm, can you? The thing for me is I need to make sure that what I'm looking at, where is the tangible reality of what I'm looking at? I have to be grounded with what I'm being shown. And as I work through the many layers of communication in your energy field and with everything that's going on, I, I care about you first. And as I'm discovering more and more about you, I'm starting to understand what puts you back together, okay? So, and what I do is I place a teardrop of my own love for you into the heart of this parasitic version of yourself. And this wise uh, spirit you gets really mad at me for that. And I say, you're a gross worm too trying to put on the mask of being some kind of guru, wise scholar spirit. And I say, get over here. And I pull this you down. And it, it's overcompensating wisdom for insecurity. It's uh, presenting itself as wise, but it's actually uh, doesn't know how to be wise. It just wants to be a poster board for being wise, but doesn't actually know how to be wise. And so I put this version of you down. Wow, how many of We got a fork. We got the adventurer, the kitty cat, the... What did I call that version of yourself? We went through the heart to get that part of you back. Is that four? Wow. And then we have this like monster. It's like the worm. And then we have the guru that was masking as wise, but was really inscribed. Didn't even know how to be. So that's four. Freaking six. That's so weird. <laughs> All right. We got six. Okay. Six versions of yourself. Man. Oh, man. Okay. I say I like you just the way you are when you're being honest to that guru. I say just be a human being, a humble human being. And that's, that's how you start to be an emanation of wisdom is when you choose to be a humble human being, you are wise. You don't have to put on some kind of costume and act out some kind of weird charade. And then you get people's approval for it. And you are just like a Halloween costume. But you, you are wise when you are a humble human being. Now everything starts to inhale and exhale. Because it, I can genuinely love you for who you are. Gives you permission to genuinely love you for who you are. For your dark and light sides. Because we're, we're talking about you as the yin-yang. You as the, the dark and light sides. Dark side got out of control with light side. And then you became completely lost inside yourself in many different parts. And confused as to how to bring it all together again. So you can start living as you. You can start living as you. Do you see how complicated that this whole thing has been? Like, I I get you. That this was flipping hard. <laughs> Ayahuasca ceremony, all this stuff happens. Your mind trying to intuitively work your way through this as you're going through this whole process. And it's You're building yourself back better. I'm telling you, this whole thing is going to help you feel like you're glowing, like the beautiful starlight that you truly are, okay? So, 
Mm. Yeah, so so we have five, right? And then we have this strange golden fork. That I don't know what that is. So we just bring these. I'm just slowly. I'm not just like slapping them together. I'm just like slowly allowing these. What are like two of your dark sides and three of your, I guess, your light sides. But when dark and light get out of balance, who's who? You know, it's just like we're just trying to hold ourselves together. So um, we're just going to merge it all together slowly but surely. Let everybody acclimate to each other. Let everybody embrace each other. It's all safe and beautiful and secure. Everything is safe about this experience. Let's trust in yourself. Let's trust in you. Bringing everybody back together, okay? <sighs> still have this golden fork that you're waking up in another dimension and you're waking up and it's a bit short this space is a bit short and it's both rock and grass and it's a natural space you represent angelic but you, you can't understand who you are or where you are and then I hand you this golden fork. I say this belongs to you. They don't focus so much on what this place looks like or what you are as this angelic emanation. Close your eyes and ask your heart. What next or who am I now? Ask your heart. All right, there's still a little bit more to go. When you close your eyes and ask your heart, I see the this golden fork is used as a stabbing tool and the heart is confused because it started to become a stomach and a heart. And the stomach is the this fork is stabbing the heart to feed the stomach, okay? And so this is a this is painful. This is a painful image. And you fall to your knees and you slam your hands on the ground and say, it'll never be done, it'll never be done, it'll never be done. I say, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're jumping to conclusions. You know, you're reminding me of that big cosmic baby man. <laughs> hey, you're grounded and you are collected and you are in control. Now I want you to look at the heart with the stomach and the fork. And I want you to tell me what we need to do to mend you right now. So you're gonna mend you in this scene. And you start to cry, you say, how am I supposed to do that? And I say, listen to your heart. Okay. Your heart says play music. And so it, it, it just suddenly starts playing music. I even see uh, literal images of uh, musical notes and I see rippling of different colors appearing, okay? And the music is entrancing and I see the fork. The fork doesn't want to play this role. The fork wants to be useful. But instead of being useful, it's used as a tool that is not what it's supposed to be used for and it's creating damage The fork uh, lies down. The heart and the stomach separate. <sighs> and I see again the image of a puppeteer puppeteering you. And it just laughs and laughs and laughs. And I say this is excellent next step. Everything is in the balance. Now it's your turn to prove that is true to yourself. Prove that is true to yourself. Now, what do you do? You're going to face whatever this laughing stock is, is really a big joke in and of itself. So it's, it doesn't matter if it's laughing. It doesn't matter if it's uh, toying with you because it's, it is a joke. Not you, not your situation is not out of the palm of your hands. It's, it's in your hands. You are the master here. Nothing else. You decide what is the outcome here. So when you decide what you're going to do about that. And we're looking at this sort of puppeteering, laughing. Uh, it's almost like his hands are in your hands and making you dance and do silly things. Because the heart, it's the stomach separate. The fork is there, just sort of sleeping, I guess. And, and it all turns into this grotesque sort of Pinocchio. 
And you cry and you say, I'm so tired. I say, I know you are, but you're not going to be right now. You're going to be strong right now. What are you going to do about that? You get angry, you say, I'm going to light it on fire. I say, wait a second, did your heart tell you to do that? Or did your head tell you to do that? <sighs> okay, find out what your heart's telling you to do. You say, my heart tells me to be the puppet. I say, okay, then be the puppet. And you say, my heart's telling me to stop pretending that I am a puppet. Okay, there you go. And my heart is telling me that it's just me messing with myself, me hurting myself. I say that I want you to face the reflection of yourself that is hurting you and ask your heart what to do. Your heart uh, sees your reflection in the mirror and walks into the mirror and finds a tiny uh, part of yourself here as well. But your heart says that all of this is a distraction, like a trap, and that um, you need to send it away to God and return to the golden fork. So you leave the mirror and you say, none of this is a part of me or anything else I need to do here. And you just send it away and you trust and believe in yourself and in your own heart. And you pick up the golden fork and you say, what are you for? And you ask your heart. You say that the golden fork was meant to be confusing. It was meant to be, it basically represents not clear. It, it's, its own message, its own vibration represents not clear, okay? And you tell the fork, I'm changing you from not clear to clear. And what you do is you take the golden energy from the fork and you place the golden energy into your heart and the fork is just discarded. And you say, wow, I, I figured that out. You, you did this. You're the one talking to me right now. You're the one telling me this. You're the one facing this inside yourself. You're the one doing all of this. Now you're asking your heart, what do I do next? And your heart says, fill in your own shoes. And you, you do. You start to become super huge. Like you were really small inside yourself and now you're growing into this big cosmic, um, cosmic person. But really you're just the size of a normal human being. <laughs> it's really cool actually. And you start to look at your hands and you say, oh my gosh, I'm back. I'm back. And you feel your head, you feel your legs, your feet. And you say, I'm me. And you kind of touch your heart and you close your eyes and you say, thank you. You thank, thanking yourself. And that's, that's powerful. You are thanking yourself. Okay. It's really powerful. Genuinely. You genuinely are thanking yourself. Genuinely. That's important. That is important that you have gratitude for you, okay? You are grateful for you and you're grateful for your heart. You're grateful for your life. You're grateful for your soul. You're grateful for this difficult learning. You're grateful for everything that has happened. You're grateful for what you're learning now. You're grateful for it. You're not afraid to live, okay? You're not afraid because you don't have to be because you can be grateful for everything that happens. And you have a wise heart genuinely because you're a humble human and in your learning honest learning in the honest way that you worked through it and it was confusing and that's honestly what it was and it was difficult and that was honestly what it was right but now you are bringing the power back into yourself because you are strong in who you are Yeah, you are strong in who you are. I will say you're going to be feeling so much better. Already you're feeling better because you, you are collected. 
your heart is mended, you're vibrating really strong from the center of who you are outward, from the heart of who you are outward. And you're not tiny inside yourself trying to work your way through this cosmic um, experience that is ridiculously confusing. You have so many parts of yourself brought back together again. And you're just starting to understand how the balance of all of this works between the human and the energy world and your mind and the strength of yourself and how to listen to your heart and how to know this is my experience and whatever is laughing at me or whatever is trying to puppeteer me or whatever, that is over there. And I'm going to ask my heart, do I need to do anything with this? Um, is this a message for me? Do I need to heal this? Um, is there something I need to work on inside myself? Um, I'm grateful for this weird experience right now. Thank you, heart. Because you're going to get a silent knowing inside yourself when you ask your heart, what do I do next? Your heart, just wait like 30 seconds. Because it's going to feel like it takes a lot longer than maybe your brain works to think. But your heart will tell you. Your heart will give you a hunch. Then you have to make sure you're honest with what your heart just said because your mind might jump all over it and rip it apart. But no, your heart is the divine truth, okay? And let your heart guide you, all right? Each step of the way, let your heart guide you, okay? All right, thank you so very much. I'm really glad I got to help you. I know this is going to work. You're gonna feel great. And this is, this whole video is everything you need to know in order to keep yourself um, moving forward from here, okay? And thank you for sharing again because there's people who are going to watch this and they're going to have some amazing takeaways from it that are going to help them in their own life. So you see how we all help each other? There's like this huge domino effect going on and we all have the power to help each other. And so thank you. Thank you everybody for watching. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.